This is the Q&A time, and I will stay as long as, as people have questions, as long as it doesn't stretch into like three hours. How do MOCs differ from structure notes? And that's asked by anonymous attendee. So MOCs, I, I tried to answer this a little bit, but, and we go into this in depth in, in the workshop, but an MOC and a structure note are very, very similar because you have a regular note. What is a note? A note is a container of thought. Okay, so let's make sure we have our de definitions. That's what a note is. It's a container of thought. An MOC and structure note, hub note, um, outline, zettel, all of these are notes with links to other notes. That's their main focus, right? That's, that's their main description. Uh, it's not to say a, a regular note can't have a link or two, but things like structure notes, their purpose is to link out to other notes. And, and to provide you with a sense of how notes are connected. The reason an MOC is different is because it has, it's much more fluid. It's not just being an index note. And I hope I showed that with the concepts MOC. An MOC allows you multiple ways to rework the same links based on what you're trying to accomplish. It is way more flexible, it is way more fluid. That's not to say that you can't do that with a structure note, but that's not the purpose of a structure note. Um, every definition I read of the structure note, that's not the purpose. But in essence, both of those notes, where they overlap in similarity of the Venn diagram, is that they are assembling links to other notes. Okay, next question. Let's see, I'm going to look in the chat. Let's see. What do you think, uh, Dimitri, what do you think, how do you utilize tags for the most effective connections? Great question. Um, when the note is abstract, meta, future self. So yeah, how can we make sure our future self finds notes and how can we use tags to, to help with that? Well, I mean, if you saw the new graph view, it was basically like, you know, the, uh, the, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. That's how I feel about tags. You know, um, I, I know Rome, which is a fantastic program, kind of did away with tags. Um, I don't know, like, the, and I don't have the ultimate answer here. So we are all learning together. Let me just preface with that. But with this new graph feature in, in Obsidian, I'm starting to really recognize the value of a tag. And it tracks with, uh, I had an article called, In What Ways Can We Make Relationships? between notes. Tags are weak links. You don't always want a direct link, right? You don't always want to say that's, that's my brother and that's my sister and that's my mother and that's my father. Sometimes you just want to say like, hey, we kind of live in the same town or, you know, we play bingo together. <laughs> Random example. You want a weak relationship and that's what a tag can do. So I tried to show this in, in the video about the graph, but off the top of my head, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good one. I find the best tags, and I think most people would agree, are actionable ones, like you know, something that you take an action on. And so here I have the develop. So this t tells me the note has been created. It might be good already, but I want to make it better. Or it might basically have nothing in it. So these existing files only. So these are the, the, the notes that I want to develop, and I'm using a tag to denote that. And then once I've, I'm done developing it, like let's go into priming. Once I feel like this isn't bad, I'm okay with priming, but I know there's so much more to develop. But once I'm done developing it, I just get rid of develop as a tag, and there you have it. Then it won't show up in the graph. That's one use of tag. Um, as far as, <laughs> save that for another time. Kevin said, asks, is there any software available that will convert Evernote notes to Markdown effectively? Kevin, someone in this um, webinar right now has the answer. So I want, I want that person to speak up and, and, and say what the best approach they have. I did my Evernote conversion when it was so painful in 2015. So don't, don't be me, there are better methods out there. So someone answer Kevin's question, how to convert their Evernote notes. 
uh, Gustav, light seems like a set of principles of organizing things. You know what? I'm going to type this so you guys can see the questions too. Um, how would you, how would an empty light kit look? What does light add to Zettelkasten? As you mentioned, is the base, yes. So light adds the map of contents. Light adds the home note. What are these things? They are fluid frameworks. They are frameworks that basically float on top of your Zettelkasten independent note structure. And from these frameworks, that's how we can not only organize and structure this information, but what I'm really trying to advocate for when it comes to an MOC is that's how we develop information. We talk about folders being top down and we talk about um, notes organically, Zettelkasten is bottom up. A map of content is middle out. It informs the notes above, it informs the, the individual notes below. That is the true power. And so until you've experienced it, it's hard to consider an MOC more than just an index note, a structure note. But once you realize, oh, I get all these notes in a room together and I get them to fight it out and battle it out and they become sharper, they become better arguments, they become clearer notes. And not only is that great for the end product, but your process of doing that makes you that much better of a thinker, makes you that much more um, able to recall the information because you've done the work. That's not note taking, that's note making. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, next question. Is there, uh, can I use light with Fogelzettel? Ooh, rabbit hole alert. I will say this, that is the beauty of a map of content is it employs Fogelzettel elements, right? But you don't have the limitations of Fogelzettel because uh, I'm not going to go into it, but Fogelzettel means that you have all of your notes and they're in one specific rigid structure. Another version of Fogelsettel is just using uh, an arbitrary timestamp. You know, why not just do that? But the point being is a map of content allows me to create a fluid Fogelsettel. Let that sink in for you Fogelsettel users. This is fluid because I can organize these ideas a million different ways. And I showed that in the concept MOC, right? This is just a version of a Fogelzettel. These ideas are lined up one after another, but then I do it in a different way right here. So hopefully that makes uh, some light bulbs go off for Fogelzettel users. All right. Thank you so much for everyone who's attended. We're just going to keep going. I can't believe that everybody is here and they're still um, asking so many great questions. Is there a way to auto-populate the backlinks in an anon eponymous note, uh, i.e., anytime concepts MOC is used, the note referencing it auto populates the concepts MOC note. Oh, okay. So basically, is there a way that I don't have to manually put the note in? Um, that's what backlinks do. So if you're in a rush and you don't have the time to actually place a new note in your MOC, all you have to make sure, I'm trying to find an example of where this might be the case. Gall's Law. Yeah. This is, okay, so who asked that question? Sarah. So Sarah, your question, it, it's as simple as this. Go to your MOC and look into the backlink section. I'm just going to collapse them. And then you say, which of these notes have I not actually put into, um, it manually put into this? You can or you, you don't have to. But a good example is Gall's Law. It's not in this anywhere. But in Gall's Law, guess what? I link to the concept MOC. So that means in the concept MOC, there is a backlink, or a better, better term for it is a linked mention right here. Awesome. All right, so we're on to David's question. We're about a quarter of the way through the questions. Yeah. I'll, I'll answer all of them. If you stick around, then stick around. Feel free to go as well, um, and we'll make sure you get everything you need. David asks, and hey, let me just put this into the chat. It's kind of strange how these windows work in Zoom. 
Can you talk about your process of building notes before you get to mapping them? Great. Yeah. Okay. So bottom up approach. What's the re relationships between say literature notes and more evergreen notes? How are you tracking sources attributions or do you bother? Okay. So let's, let's approach that in this. I'm using the light kit for the example here, David, I'm going to go into, where is it at? So, Douglas Hofstadter, I, I watched this uh, YouTube video a few months back and I de decided, let me take notes on this and kind of, you know, give a good example for everyone. So as I, my notes initially did not look this pretty, but I, I did go back and, you know, pretty them up a little bit, but I've just taken notes, right? Using um, kind of an outline format. And when I got to a note that I thought I wanted to, I was like, whoa, this is, yeah, this is a new concept. Then I was like, okay, let's make a new note and then put that information here. And so that's what concept expansion became. Um, now, this is my literature note right here in sources. So I can always go back to this literature note and kind of get the additional context. The big note I wanna say with literature notes that you see here, these are my words, these are my thoughts. And it's, it's me interpreting what I listen to. And if, if I did quote something because it was so perfect, I will quote it here. So I always remember that. So that's how I make sure to do the attributions properly. I'm not as rigorous about the attributions as a true academic. That's me personally, but you can be, there's nothing preventing you from being um, that level of rigor. I always want to make sure I attribute ideas to the right person however, because that's just the right thing to do. But let's say I'm here, here's a good example, back to the concepts map. And then I'm looking in linked mentions and oh, what's this concept expansion? Click on that, here we are. And then I'm like, oh, let's go back to the quote literature note. And then I'm back to a literature note. So I hope, I hope that helped answer your question, answer your question, David, about uh, literature notes and 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 by the way, none of that used a map. So that's just, you know, bottom up working. How is light compared to para or other PKM methods? I'll be careful with this one. I would say at the at the heart of it all is light is flexible and you customize your system. Para depends on four folders. And it seems like every other comment in the world of linking um, with Obsidian and Rome is they, they'll say something like, well, I use Para, but I don't use the A. Or, you know, I kind of blend this and that. Um, so if it's helpful for you, do that. Um, I think when you change your, your mindset from folders to links, uh, Para kind of loses a lot of its value. This is another valuable note though. There are uses for para. People are using para in, or para, I don't know, in Obsidian quite effectively. Uh, one of the mods on the uh, Obsidian forum um, Discord channel, they're using para. They're, they're doing a lot of project management. And that's truly the big point here. Hey, if you're a project manager, if that's the real reason that you're using your notes, your digital notes, then you probably, yeah, try to do that whole PARA approach. However, that's not my main audience. And I hope that's not you to any, I mean, yeah, sure. We all manage stuff. What I want to manage, what I want to develop, where I want to spend my time is with ideas, with memories, with making sense out of things. That's the beauty of linking your thinking. Now, if you just want to manage people and manage projects, then you know, project management can happen in Obsidian. It can happen in Rome. It can happen in these linked networking apps, but it's just not um, where I'm going to put my attention. And because of that, Para makes zero sense for me. Um, and what I'm trying to get at is you need to make your custom system when it's based on links. Links change the game. So we have to you know, consider everything from a blank slate, what's going to work best. And that blank slate for me is, these are some folders. Honestly, these folders could change. 
Maybe I decide I don't really need workspaces because I'm linking my thoughts. Um, but if I have a business, then I might have a workspace just for those notes because those things are tend to, tend to be more together. So I hope that answers without getting into it too much.